All right. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this session about knowledge equity on this year's Wikimania. This session is called Knowledge Power Equity, a Wikimedia Deutschland event series on issues of the equitable distribution of power. My name is Lily Iliev. I work here as the head of the team politics and public sector. And together with the team, we are primarily um, working and communicating and developing um, policies that are intended to strengthen the political and legal framework for free knowledge and to communicate them to policymakers, to associations, to the media. And one of the crucial issues when it comes to the future of our movement is the strategic goal of knowledge equity. So I'm really happy to be able to present this project and this event series that we came up with um, here at Wikimedia Deutschland to you. And I'm really curious to hear uh, what you think about it, your feedback and your approaches to knowledge equity afterwards. But let's get started now. I will share my presentation with you. Just a second. All right, there it is. So in the next 15 minutes, you will hear about the concept of this event series, Knowledge Power Equity. You will hear about the topics and the guests that we invited so far. Um, we will hear about the media collaboration that we succeeded in winning for this event series. And you will also hear a little bit about the intended impact that we try to achieve here for the strategic goal of knowledge equity. So let's get started. Coming back to knowledge equity, um, just for a second, as we all know, this is um, one of the fundamentals of the 20, 2030 strategy. And the distribution of knowledge is a matter of power and it's also a matter of equity. And I think it's truly really a crucial issue when it comes to the future of our movement so another fundamental question inherent in many aspects of knowledge equity that you are also working on is how can we distribute power more equitably? And of course, this is not exclusive for the Wikimedia world. Especially in recent years, there have been louder voices in many contexts calling for more equitable distribution of power. I'm thinking of the Me Too movement, for example, which has made unequal power structures more visible and society more sensitive to them. And I think it's really important to build on this growing social sensitivity in order to make knowledge equity better known and also to generate um, understanding and mobilization for it. Because we will be all the more successful if we connect the idea of knowledge equity with existing louder voices um, and social discourses around diversity and a lack of representation of different kinds of knowledge in politics, in media, and um, also in Wikipedia, of course. So the second question was, how can we connect to existing discourses on unequal power structures? We then came up with the concept for a discussion series to explore these questions further and to discuss them with people working in different fields of knowledge equity. So the concept is we are organizing a series of conversations called Knowledge, Power, Equity. Uh, in German, this is Wissen macht Gerechtigkeit. And it takes place every two to three months. And in a moderated discussion, two to three guests are talking about an issue from the spectrum of knowledge equity. These discussions are always moderated by Deutschlandfunk and also produced by Deutschlandfunk, who we succeeded in winning for a media corporation. Deutschlandfunk is the biggest broadcaster in the German speaking area, and they would broadcast the conversations on the radio. And afterwards, we then have the podcast for our own uh, communication channels and for communicating it further, for example, also to policymakers. So let's come to the topics and guests. The topics come from the context, the spectrum of knowledge equity, and also the fundamental question of how digital public spheres should be shaped and designed to be welcoming and safe for all people. 
And for our pilot episode, um, we had Christian Humburg, who is the executive director of Wikimedia Deutschland. And also we could win Dr. Emilia Roack, who is a political scientist based in Berlin and in France. She's the author of Why We Matter and the founder of the Center for Intersectional Justice, which is also based in Berlin. So the two of them were discussing a little bit about how knowledge of domination or um, dominating knowledge is changing through time, how uh, it is changing through uh, digitization and also through projects like Wikipedia, of course. Our second episode was about disinformation in election campaigns. And um, this was at the time when there was the federal um, elections here in Germany last year. And we were particularly interested this time in um, the question, who is particularly negatively affected by disinformation? So we discussed this with Ingrid Brodnig, who is a well-known um, journalist based in Austria and an author also, and she is an, an expert for disinformation. And we had also a journalist and writer, uh, Yasin Muschalbash, who is working a lot in this field of disinformation. And then Professor Martin Emma, a professor for uh, communication science and journalism and a, a founding member of the Weizenbaum Institute, which is the um, German Internet Institute. Our next episode uh, was about the concept of a post-colonial museum. And this is a very timely and very super relevant question for cultural institutions, cultural heritage institutions in general, and museums in particular, um, for the whole glam sector, actually. So the question was, is there already a post-colonial paradigm shift visible in museums? And what post-colonial concepts and what... Um, Specific examples are there for the cooperation of museums with representatives of so-called societies of origin. For this, we had Jan Zakizabandi, who is a curator for exhibiting colonialism and racism at the Anne Frank Education Center. We also had Christopher Nixon, who is a curator for colonial past and post-colonial present at the Foundation of Historical Museums in Hamburg. And another curator, um, Kevin Bress, who is responsible for the reinvention of the Grassi Museum for für Völkerkunde in the city of Leipzig. So this was a truly a super interesting conversation. Our next episode and the last one we did so far is called Public Money, Public Good. So this is one of the core demands that we have um, facing the public sector. Um, we think that what is financed primarily, primarily or fully with public money must be freely available to all people. And um, the question is, how can this be implemented politically? And this is also relevant for knowledge equity, or it has a huge uh, knowledge equity dimension, because, um, you know, the question is, how can it be ensured that content produced by the public sector does not only benefit the public sector itself or policymakers, but also all people, um, the broader public and all people in general. For this question, we had the brilliant Lilith Wittmann, who is a net political activist, um, specifically on this topic also. And she's also a software developer and an IT security expert. We also had Max Funke Kaiser, who is the spokesperson for digital policy for the liberals here in the German Bundestag. And then Alexander Hanschu, who's the spokesman for policy issues at the German Association of Towns and Municipalities. Let's take a look at the next um, episode, which will be broadcast in August. So this month, actually. And this episode will ask, do we need a feminist digital policy? And the most important question here for me um, is how can feminist perspectives be made useful for current digital policy challenges, such as 
you know, the advances for systematic, uh, systematic surveillance or also the fight for digital um, violence in general. And for this episode, um, for this issue, we have the deputy chair of the digital, digital committee in the Bundestag, as well as the founder, one of the founders of a fantastic initiative based here in Berlin. It's called Superlab. And it's an interdisciplinary group of people um, working on policy recommendations uh, specifically designed for shaping more equitable digital futures. So that's what we did so far. Let's take a look at the intended impact now that we aim to achieve. So the question is, what are we supposed to achieve through this? And can a series of events even um, explore knowledge equity and uh, maybe even strengthen it? And as, as, as I said before, I think it's really important that we communicate well what we do to the outside world in order to avoid working in silos um, and also for a long-term impact of our work for the society. So I think it's really important um, that we communicate also the efforts towards knowledge equity in a way that is effective for the public and effective for other initiatives doing similar things. And we would like to discuss the possible aspects of knowledge equity with people who already work in different fields that are connected with knowledge equity, um, but who are working on knowledge equity from very different perspectives and to bring them on one table and discuss the things to um, develop them further, especially from a political, from a technological and from a social point of view. What are the next topics that we are planning? Um, coming up next is the topic of the so-called community capitalism. So this is about how we can prevent politics that has a tendency to more and more delegate public responsibilities to volunteer engagement, which, is, which we can see happening in different sectors and also um, in the digital volunteer engagement. And another topic will be how the knowledge of Omnia and Sintesa can be represented more effectively. So this is it. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks so much for your attention. I would be happy if you contact me with feedback, if you get back to me, if we can get in touch about other formats um, around knowledge equity. And I hope you will have a wonderful and insightful Wikimania. See you.